I don't think I can ever make too much beef jerky. And I've made it in the oven, I've made it in the electric smoker. Today, I'm gonna make it on my new pellet grill. So I'm actually gonna be doing about seven and a half pounds of sliced up top round, which is also sold as London broil. It's a very common cut to use for making beef jerky. Now I'll put a link to some of my other beef jerky videos in the video description and up here so you can check those out. I'm not gonna show you the slicing of the meat. I've done that so many times. You can check out one of those other videos. That shows you everything. And we're only gonna be using one made marinade today, one we're gonna make right here. The other two are bottled marinades, which I happen to find, which I think will do really good. So let's get this first marinade made. And it's very simple, three ingredients. It's an orange soy marinade. We're gonna start with three quarters of a cup of soy sauce, a quarter cup of orange juice, and a tablespoon of some pretty finely cracked black pepper. It's not all the way fine ground, but it's, it's pretty close. And we're gonna mix this together. That looks good. Let's go ahead and get our marinades on the strips of top round. So I already have the cut up strips of top round in some Ziploc bags. I've got the name of the marinade or an abbreviation of it written on the bag. So I won't forget. I've forgotten before when I've done different batches and then you kind of have to guess and play jerky roulette. What flavor is it? This is for our soy orange marinade. We're just gonna go ahead and pour this in. Just give this a quick little massage here. Let's get our next one going. This marinade is gonna be a Thai style sweet chili sauce. And we'll just pour enough in here. I don't know if we'll need the whole bottle, maybe about half of it. And give it a quick little massage here. And on to number three. This is a sesame garlic marinade. Same thing, probably about half the bottle here. And these are 12 ounce bottles, so that's about six ounces. All right, our three bags of top round pieces marinating are ready. They're gonna go in the refrigerator overnight, and I'll see you tomorrow out at the pellet grill. All right, our pieces of top round have been marinating overnight. The Camp Chef Woodwind Wi-Fi 24 is coming up to temp. Let's go ahead and get all our pieces of beef on racks and ready to get on there and smoked. So the racks are three different sizes to fit the contour of the cooking chamber. On this bottom rack, I'm going to put the Thai chili pieces. You gotta make space to cram people in, go ahead. These pieces will shrink up. If the pieces of beef are too wet after marinating overnight, go ahead and dry them off a little bit with a paper towel. That'll speed the drying process. Not 100% necessary, but I do it on occasion. Not gonna do that today though. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the jerky pieces all racked up, and then we're gonna go ahead and get them on the grill. All right, let's go ahead and get our jerky on here. So this is the sesame garlic going in the top rack here. Orange soy. Here is our Thai, sweet chili Thai. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our lid closed. Let these get smoking. So these pieces of top round, to turn them into jerky, is probably gonna take somewhere between four and six hours. We're gonna come back out here in about two hours and check them. And one thing I say in all my jerky videos is, I don't do this for long-term preservation. These pieces of jerky will be taken to the level of dryness that I like, then I store them in the refrigerator. So if you're making jerky for a long-term storage, you have to look for other ways to do it. I don't do it that way. So we'll come back in a couple hours, check it, see how we're doing. All right, it's been almost two hours. We've been holding really steady in the 150 to 170 range. 
when you're at this low temperature producing more smoke, there's a little bit more variation in temperature. So 10 degree swings are not unusual, even 15 or 20 sometimes. And I don't think I mentioned that I'm using hickory wood for pellets today. So we're getting some nice hickory smoke on these jerky pieces. So let's go ahead and have a look. Oh, we're getting some nice color on this jerky. Clearly have more time to go, but I just love the color you get when you have really good smoke. And especially when you have, I find actually hickory does give this really sort of rich red color. I've used olive wood before on beef and it gives it even sort of a deeper, almost magenta color. But this is just beautiful. Now this is gonna darken, it's not gonna stay this color. It's gonna get dark, almost black by the time it's done. That's what I usually find. But this is looking fantastic. Now on this lower rack, you can see there's less color on the ones that are kind of hidden, and you'll find that too here, some of the ones further back. They'll take a little bit longer. They're not getting as much of that upper exposure to smoke as this top rack is, but that'll even out over time. You could rotate the racks, but in this situation, these racks don't fit in other places. They have to go in the specific place they're in. So you can always take the pieces off, rotate them, flip them if you want, but trust me, I've done this before. In the oven, same thing happens on multiple layers. It'll even out over time. So let's go ahead, get this closed up, let it keep smoking. We'll check it again in two more hours at the four hour mark. All right, we are just about four hours in. Let's take a look. Oh, nice. Still keeping some of that nice rich red color as it darkens. Now some of these thicker pieces, obviously, if I want to dry them as much, it's going to take a lot longer, but I don't mind if those are a little more tender where you don't have the dryness. But these are looking good. I'm going to guess for the tenderness and the dryness I like, I'm going to guess about another hour. Yep, see these are starting to darken up more here. It's not as light in the center anymore. My guess is the bottom rack pieces are still gonna be a little lighter in spots. Yeah, right there, but it is darkening up, you can see. So we're gonna get this closed up, let it go for another hour. I think we'll probably be done then, but if we need to go further, longer, we will. So I'll see you back here in about an hour. All right, we've been going five hours. Let's check our jerky. Oh, that is looking good. Peel a piece up here and see how we are doing flex-wise. Remember, I like mine a little bit more tender, not dry. So I like to do a quick little bend here. You see how it starts to tear, but it's not snapping. That's what I like. Some of the thinner pieces, you're gonna get more of a snap to them, like this one here, I'm pretty sure it'll break. It's all based upon the thickness of the pieces that you cut. Yeah, that breaks a little more. Not too much more though. This is the level of dryness I like. So we're gonna get this off, get it inside, have a taste. All right, here are some representative samples from the larger amount of beef jerky that just finished. It's been cooling for about 15 minutes. And I gotta say the color turned out great. A little more red than I'm used to and it's gotta just be from more of that concentrated hickory smoke. I've seen that same color shift before using hickory in other things. And in the pellet grill, I'm just guessing with that low smoke setting, and that, when it says low smoke, it's not lower smoke volume. It just means low temperature and high smoke. When you have that setting, it's putting a lot more smoke on this. So you're gonna get that smoke flavor. And I think you are getting some of that color shift from that hickory in here too. But it did darken up appreciably. And that's usually what happens so over here we have our sesame garlic. Right here in the middle we have our orange soy with a lot of that ground black pepper. And on this side we have the Thai with sort of the sweet Thai chili marinade. What are we gonna do? Just here and talk about beef jerky? No, it's time to taste. So I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna start from this side, work my way over. So we're gonna start with the Thai sweet chili marinade. Let's see. Right off the top I can tell you, Smoke flavor, very prevalent on this. So that low temperature, 
higher smoke setting. Really does work out on the Woodwind Wi-Fi 24. I like that. Um, I'm not sure I would use it for other things than jerky. Maybe for a fish, a salmon or a trout or something like that. But generally for, you know, cuts of meat like, you know, brisket or tri-tip or anything like that, you're going to want it to be up in the 220 range. At least I would. So for jerky, it does give that drying effect. It gives you that longer time, lower temperature drying effect and great flavor on this with the sweet Thai chili. Now we're gonna move on to the orange soy with a lot of that pepper, let's see. Mmm, again, great smoke flavor. And I just love a peppery bite on jerky. So that works really well with this marinade. And this was the only marinade of the three that we actually sort of made, just those few ingredients, soy sauce, orange juice, and ground black pepper. Works terrific. Finally, the sesame garlic. Let's see how that is. Mmm, interesting. Not quite as much smoke flavor on that one. I do get it, but nowhere near as much as the other two. I don't know if that's something to do with the marinade, the sesame garlic. You do get a good garlic punch in this. Maybe there's a little counteracting of that smoke flavor from the garlic, I'm not sure, but it tastes fantastic. So that was my first time using the Camp Chef Woodwind Wi-Fi 24 to make jerky work really well. I've mentioned before, Camp Chef sent me that grill to test and review, so thank you, Camp Chef. I'll be cooking a lot more things on it in the future, and definitely more jerky, because you always gotta have more jerky.